Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Payne Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and uh, today I'm surrounded by the Florida Sunshine State Young Reader Award finalists for the 2016-2017 school year. I have finally finished reading all of these books. I wasn't quite sure I was going to be able to do it this year, but I laid aside everything else to get them finished in early March and so now I'd like to do kind of an overview for you. Part of the reason we have them all checked out right now from the library is because my daughter Katie participated in the book bowl at her school and she still had several that she needed to read and so did I. So we just went ahead and checked them all out so that she could cram and read as many as possible of the ones she hadn't read yet and we could review who the main characters were and a little bit about each book. And so while I have them checked out, I wanted to tell you a little bit about them. If you are not familiar with the Sunshine State program, it is a program that is run by the Florida Association for Media and Education, and I will link below my last year's overview video. I had a librarian friend of mine, she's actually the librarian at my daughter's school, who did that video with me, and she talked a little bit about the program. She's a lot more familiar with it than I am, but this year everything was just crazy and she was just really busy and I kind of just wanted to get this done at home and it was going to be really hard for us to find a place where we could do it together. So um, I don't have a guest speaker this year for this video, but I wanted to just quickly give you an overview of all the books. And then I've already started doing an individual review of each of these books. I have several done already and they are uploaded on my channel. And then I will be doing the rest of them within the next uh, little while. I'll start with Crossover by Kwame Alexander. This is probably the most famous of the books that are in this list because this is a Newbery winner. I really enjoyed this book, but Katie read this one and she was not a big fan of it. Mostly due, I believe, to the fact that it's written in verse. She is a voracious reader and really is a quick reader. And I thought she would be able to just, you know, get this one done in no time. But she said this one was actually harder for her to read because she had to kind of read it out loud in order to get the story because it's done in rap and she was just not a fan of it. This is about two twin boys who are both basketball players and one of them gets a girlfriend and the other one is feeling left out and it's just kind of their story and their family dynamic. It's got some really tearjerker moments and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. But I also heard a couple of other kids talking about it and they were not big fans of it either, partly because of the rap they just didn't like. However, I think that would appeal to some but maybe not to everyone. Uh, the next book is Frenzy by Robert Lettrick. This is our token creepy or horror book of the list. I would definitely classify this one as horror. This one is really crazy. It, these kids are at summer camp and all the animals start attacking them and when you get an animal bite you immediately die. So it's pretty serious. It's, it's a survival story about the kids who are able to get away from camp and how they survive. So Katie really enjoyed this one a lot and, and I thought it was good. She said that this is probably one of her favorites if not her favorite. This one is called The Honest Truth by Dan Gemeinhart. Katie said this is also one of her top favorites and I really enjoyed this one. This one has some white knuckle moments I'll tell you. The premise of this is a young boy who's been diagnosed with a life-threatening illness and he doesn't want to spend the rest of his life in a hospital. He really wants to climb Mount Rainier and he runs away to do just that. So we really enjoyed this one a lot and we would both recommend it. The next one is Insignia by S.J. Kincaid. This is the first in a trilogy. Katie did not get this one read, but I think she would enjoy this one if she ever gets around to reading it. The premise is that it's set in World War III. There's a, a boy, I believe he's 14, and he's recruited to join the military as a combatant. Um, because of his video gaming skills. So it sounds a little like Ready Player One to kind of start out. It is set in the future and, and I guess you could probably make some comparisons to Ready Player One, but I really thought it was great. I asked another one of the students in Katie's school who did read all of the books what his favorite was and he said it was Insignia. The next one is Turn Left at the Cow by Lisa Bullard. Uh, Katie said to tell you that she disliked this one so much she couldn't even get through it. I personally thought it was fun. It was a mystery story about a young boy. He basically is not happy with his home situation with his mom. His dad has passed away. He goes and runs away to visit his paternal grandmother and to kind of learn a little bit more about the person that his father was. When he gets there, he finds out that his father 
was a bank robber, and or at least that's what everyone believes. And his father had died, and no one knew where the bank money had ended up. The bank money was lost. And so it had kind of become a town pastime to try to figure out what happened to this money and you know, just try to find it because the bank had offered a reward for it. So when our main character gets there, he sort of gets all this dumped in his lap. He didn't know that his father had robbed a bank. So he sort of jumps in and tries to figure out what happened to his father. Did he really rob a bank? Where is the money? Meanwhile, someone is threatening him because they think he knows where the money is. So I thought this was a really interesting story. For some reason, Katie couldn't get into it, but I really liked it. All right, the next book is Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. This is a Newbery Honor book. Katie and I both read this one in 2016, and my husband read this one as well. This is quite a chunker. It's really in three main parts, and while it has a little bit of a fantasy element, to me, really, the majority of this book is just really good historical fiction. It's centered around three young people. One is from Germany, one is from California, and one is from Pennsylvania. The main parts of the story is set in the early 40s as Hitler is coming into power, and I just thought it was a fantastic book, especially the audio. Uh, the fantasy element of this book centers around a magic harmonica, and so on the audio book, you get to hear the actual harmonica music, as well as several other different instruments, and it was just beautiful. I really loved this book. All right, the next one is All Fall Down by Alec Carter. This is the first in the Embassy Rose series. This is about a, a girl whose grandfather is an ambassador in a fictitious country, and she has witnessed her mother being murdered, she says. No one else believes that her mother was murdered. They believe it was an accidental death, and she can't convince anyone otherwise. So they think she's got psychological issues, and her father sends her to live with her grandfather to see if that will help. And while she's there, she starts seeing the man she believes killed her mother. So this is a really good book. It's, you know, it's got international intrigue and a, a lot of adventure. I have only read the first one so far. I am interested in reading the rest of the series because I really want to know what happens. The next one I want to talk about is Bot Wars by J.V. Cade. This is a futuristic, dystopian book. This kind of had Hunger Games undertones to me, although there were no games. It's just the way the, um, the, the country was set up with the different districts and things like that sort of just, rem it just reminded me a little bit of Hunger Games, but I thought it was really a good book. So this book takes place after there's been a war with the robots. The robots have revolted, they were not getting treated with equal rights, and so they've revolted, and our main character, Trout, is looking for his father. His father has disappeared during the bot wars, and he's been gone now for two years. So Trout and his older brother are searching for him, and this just goes on from there. There's still definitely a big conflict between robots and humans. Robots are not allowed to come into human territory now. They have their own territory. I don't know. It's too much to explain, but I thought it was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, this is one of the books that I've already done a quick review on. It's The Tapper Twins Go to War with Each Other by Jeff Rodkey. So this is about two twins who basically keep trying to get revenge on the other for the wrongs that they perceive the other has done to them. And this was my least favorite of the 15. Still not a bad book. It does address issues of cyberbullying and getting revenge and getting along and making up and things like that. It, it's a fun read. It's also got illustrations and it's definitely a quick and easy read. So uh, I think this would be fun, especially maybe for boys who enjoy video games because there are, you know, there's graphic illustrations and, and references to video games and things like that. So that might be a good audience for this book. Um, but as I said, this is my least favorite of the 15. This is one of the last ones that I finished. This one actually takes place at Christmas. I wish I had found out about this at Christmas time because this would be a wonderful Christmas read. This story is called Nickel Bay Nick by Dean Pitchford. And I'm really not going to tell you anything about this one because it's better to go into this blind. But it is about a boy who he's having a lot of issues staying out of trouble. He's gotten in kind of with the wrong crowd. Um, he is just really making poor decisions and so that's kind of where it starts out but this is really just a wonderful book and I would definitely recommend picking this one up especially during the Christmas season.
Katie read this one, and she really liked this one as well. The next one I want to talk about is The Neptune Project by Polly Hollyoke. This one's really unique and unusual. It takes place underwater. It is about a group of kids in a futuristic society, and they have been genetically engineered to be able to transition to be able to survive underwater. So the majority of the book takes place underwater. I'm not a swimmer, really, so that was a little nerve-wracking for me, but I did enjoy the book, enjoyed the story, and there are more in this series, and I'm definitely interested in continuing because I want to know what happens next. The next book, The Worst Class Trip Ever by Dave Barry, it's just crazy. It's your typical Dave Barry humor, if you've ever read any of Dave Barry's contemporary books. It's really not very believable, but it is plausible, I suppose, uh, but there's just zany characters and it's just wacky. <laughs> so if you are in the mood for uh, insanity, then you might want to read some Dave Barry books. I think it is a fun story. Um, Katie said she also enjoyed this one, but again, she agreed that it's not really very believable. Uh, it's basically about these eighth graders who are going on a field trip with their class to Washington, D.C. And on the plane, they encounter some suspicious characters with suspicious luggage and then a conspiracy ensues. It's kind of a funny look and a funny take on, you know, realistic fiction, but the actual events are pretty outlandish. So if you're in the mood for a silly book, this is a good one. This one I read in 2016, and I really enjoyed this one. In fact, I already have a review up on my channel. This is called The Sinister Sweetness of Splendid Academy by Nikki Lofton. This one has a lot of really good themes that I think are very relevant for middle schoolers today. The, the theme of obesity and how peers react to that is in this book and I thought it was handled very well. It's also a loose retelling of Hansel and Gretel but it's and it's very dark. It's a, a fantasy book. It's definitely not realistic. You know, it's, it's a bit magical but I thought it was a really fun book to read and I really enjoyed all of the messages that it presented. The next one is The Luck Uglies by Paul Durham. This one took me a little while to get into but once I got into it then I really got into it. This was a, actually a really good story. It was a fantasy book about a young girl who lives in a, a poverty-stricken village run by an evil Earl. In the past their village has been terrorized by these bald noblins and they are believed to be extinct until all of a sudden one returns and they need to call upon the Luck Uglies who are the kind of roving band of outlaws who know how to deal with bog noblins but the Earl doesn't want to allow the Luck Uglies back. So the Luck Uglies are a legendary group and we really don't know much about them when the story starts out. I thought this was a very entertaining book and I really enjoyed it. Alright, so I saved the best for last. This is my absolute favorite book. I've already done a review of this on my channel. This is The Summer I Saved the World in 65 Days by Michelle Weber Hurwitz. This book is just about good things. It's wonderful. And if you want to know more about it, be sure to check out my review. It's about a young girl who decides that she wants to make a difference by doing 65 good things she starts out in her neighborhood and it kind of blossoms from there and she spends her summer doing good things and I really think if everybody would read this book we would achieve world peace. I know. I just really do. If you enjoy reading middle grade books this is a really great list to read from. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you. So Katie wanted Bob to be in the video. I've already put my books away but we decided to turn the camera back on and let Bob be in the video. Um, so can you say hi, Bob? Say hi, hi Bob. Bye.